Hello and welcome to COVID-19 Local Impact on Your TV. I'm Dan Malta from the Your TV studios in Peterborough. Today is Wednesday, meaning we'll have an address from the Peterborough Public Health Unit and Dr. Rosanna Salvaterra. Here's what she had to say this morning. Thanks very much, Brittany. So uh, we're pleased to share with you our weekly dashboard of local data. And for those of you who are in the room, we have this uh, displayed on the screen. So I'll start from the top. As of 4 p.m. yesterday, we have 73 confirmed cases in total, and that represents an increase of six cases since last week. You'll see that 64 of our cases are resolved, so that leaves only seven active cases at the time uh, that we are following. Just over half of these cases are, uh, are because of close contacts to existing uh, cases. Uh, what, just walking you through what's on the screen here, you'll see we still have the two deaths that have been reported. Uh, since last week, we have now tested over 5,600 people living in Peterborough. We are one of the, uh, per capita, we have one of the highest testing rates in the province. Uh, you'll see as far as the case demographics that 53% uh, of our cases are female. Uh, and by age, you'll see the breakdown that we have cases from every age group and that the majority of our cases are still between 20 uh, and uh, 79 years of age. If I can have the next, thank you very much. Uh, we have, uh, I want to uh, point out that the source of exposure, I, I have said that 50% of our uh, cases can be linked to uh, contact with another case. Uh, travel remains the second leading cause of, of exposure at 31, just over 31%. And 17.8% of our cases have no link. And that's, that represents what we call the community spread of, of cases. Uh, you'll see that we now are providing you with the, uh, the cases that are linked to outbreaks. And these are outbreaks that are not only occurring in Peterborough, but some of our cases are linked because of their work uh, to outbreaks outside of Peterborough. Fifteen of our cases are linked to long-term care home outbreaks. Two of our cases are linked to retirement homes and four cases are linked to other outbreaks that have occurred in other settings, whether that's retail or, or other congregate living settings. We have our list of, of local uh, outbreaks and you'll see that we have two outbreaks that are currently uh, ongoing in Peterborough. We have the one at St. Joseph's at Fleming, which we expect uh, will, uh, we will be able to uh, uh, call uh, over soon. Uh, and we also have a new one at Kawartha Heights Retirement Living, which was found in an asymptomatic person as a result of our enhanced surveillance. We were in that facility last week testing everyone. Um, so I think we have one more slide to show you. Oh, actually we have a few more. First of all, this, these are the new cases by reported dates. So again, you'll see pretty flat and, and uh, with one case occurring every day or so. We had a, a flurry of four cases on the 7th of May. Those were household contacts uh, of a case. And if I could have the next slide, please, Brittany. There's our, uh, that's our epi curve. And again, you'll see pretty flat, uh, especially in the last, uh, in the last few weeks, which is good to see. That's what you want to see. And then I think we have one more slide. And this is our rate of cases per 100,000. So there you see Peterborough in comparison to the rest of the province. Our rate here is 49 cases per 100,000, uh, which is notably less than the provincial rate of 143 cases per 100,000. So with that, I just want to make, uh, uh, make a few remarks. Uh, certainly, uh, spring is in the air, and I know that we're all yearning for a restart. The data in Peterborough continues to be reassuring. 
Uh, however, we are fighting a virus that is easily transmitted even before someone has symptoms or by people who are infected and may not have any symptoms at all. Uh, and although Peterborough's curve is flat, we know that there are still hundreds of new cases occurring daily in Ontario. It's important that we continue to do what our board chair has said, and that is to rely on public health measures such as staying at home, avoiding cl close contacts, and maintaining a minimum of two meters distance whenever we venture out. It means we do need to keep washing our hands often. We need to avoid touching our faces and self-inoculating ourselves with the virus. And many will find that wearing a face covering when in public helps prevent that. It also helps to uh, stop our droplets from contaminating others or the environment. The challenge will be that we need to do all of these protective actions while we begin to restart our lives. We are not going back to normal. The province is not even at phase one in the recovery yet. In the weeks and the months ahead, we will need to create a new normal. And if we forget or let down our guard, if we forget that the virus is still here, we put the risk of uh, we put at risk the health of uh, our most vulnerable. The province has extended the state of emergency until June the second. This means that current emergency orders, such as the prohibition of events and gatherings of more than five people, are still in effect. I want to thank our board chair for his reminder that garage and yard sales should be cancelled this spring. As we approach the Victoria Day weekend, we'll need to remind ourselves time and time again that this is an extraordinary year. We've been following the recommendations of our Chief Medical Officer of Health to stay home and we have been asking our seasonal residents to delay their return to their lake fronts. At some point, they will start to come back and we need them to do so safely. I am asking everyone in Peterborough to continue to restrict your visitors avoid risky activities that will put demand on and create a risk for our first responders. And I am asking that we all respect the physical distancing, whether we are in our primary or in our secondary homes. For our returning seasonal residents, it is best if you reduce the number and the frequency of your trips into the GTA, if that is your home. And if you are staying, please continue to self-isolate if you are vulnerable or at high risk. Depending on your circumstances, it may make sense to undertake a 14-day period of self-isolation as part of your transition into your summer home. If you will not be staying and just planning short visits, it would be best to plan to isolate while you are here. Know the symptoms of COVID-19 and call the assessment center at PRHC to get an appointment for testing as soon as possible if you become ill. Some of our essential businesses and parks have begun to open, but we are not yet in phase one of the recovery. The provincial roadmap reminds us that we need four things in order to be sure we are keeping safe while we reopen our economy and our communities. The first is that we will need to see daily and sustained decreases in the number of new cases in Peterborough, including a decrease in the percentage of new cases that can't be traced to a source. So we are at 17.8% for community transmission. That needs to be even lower. We need to see continued aggressive case and contact follow-up by public health. Right now, 100% of our cases are followed up the same day, seven days a week. We, and by we, I mean Peterborough Public Health, we need to keep that up. We'll need to stay at the top of our game as a community with high per capita numbers of testing. It's only by looking for the virus and not finding it that we can be sure we're containing its spread. 
And fourth, we need enough health care system capacity and access to PPE to make sure we are able to respond to any new cases that arise. Provincial hospitals are planning to resume their operations. They can only do that if we can protect enough of their capacity to surge for a new wave of COVID cases if needed. If we don't prevent a resurgence, our loved ones will not be able to get their needed cancer treatments or their surgeries. So that is our call to action. If we can keep up the good work, if we can encourage each other to stay the course, we can carefully begin to reinstate some of those activities we have missed in these past couple of months, like going to the lake, going for a drive, going to the library, or enjoying a meal that we didn't have to cook ourselves. Just remember, test results are like looking in the rear view mirror. It takes at least two weeks to see the impact of any change we make. So let's make sure, Peterborough, that we walk and not run into this new normal that we are building together. Thank you. Dr. Salvatera presented the numbers for Peterborough City, County and Hiawatha and Curve Lake First Nations, but let's take a look at the COVID-19 statistics for the city of Kawartha Lakes. 139 current confirmed cases with four probable cases, 47 current high-risk contacts, nine hospitalizations, 109 of those 139 confirmed have been resolved, 32 confirmed deaths to go along with two confirmed outbreaks. In Northumberland County, 14 cases, 12 current high-risk contacts, one hospitalization, 13 of the 14 confirmed cases have been resolved. COVID-19 has changed everyone's grocery shopping experience. Your TV's Mary Tendeschat speaks with the staff at Morello's Independent Grocer on Lansdowne Street to find out what long-term effects the pandemic will have. Things like the plexiglass, I, I, I honestly think the plexiglass will still exist six months, a year from now. We're going to move forward. Everything will be touchless. Touchless soap dispensers, touchless sanitized dispensers, etc. Like I said, now a lot of it is touchless because we're doing it for the customers when they come in. But I do have a dispenser at the exit um, that people will, um, will obviously use on their way out. Reusable bags will change. We don't know what that means. Does that mean customers will bag their own? Does it mean we're going to stop doing them? I'm not suggesting that we are. It just the, the reusable bag thing will will change in terms of how that's managed. So we're always going to be managing uh, head counts. We're always going to be managing sanitation um, uh, at, a, at a heightened level. Um, I'd like to continue directional aisles. I mean, some customers hate it and it makes shopping a little bit more difficult, but it, it does have and serve uh, benefits. Morello says communicating has been key to ensuring staff are informed, engaged, and feel safe while at work and home. Every morning before the store opens, he spends 10 to 15 minutes in what he calls a huddle with his employees. I go into every huddle and my communication, trying to educate, trying to provide direction, comfort, let them know what we're doing, what we're working on. Um, and I always challenge them to, there's always a question and answer period at the end of each huddle. And I'm always challenging them to bring forward ideas not just about what the new world will look like and what's the new normal, but what can we do better? What can we do differently for today? So we're getting a lot of feedback there too. And also those huddles uh, uh, are also accessible to anybody who in the public. So anybody who's thinking of shopping at Morello's or does shop at Morello's can check in and see what Dave is up to and Kim are up to in terms of keeping everybody safe. The other thing he does too, which is kind of cool, is he shares emails and messages that him and Kim receive from customers kind of makes everybody feel pretty good that we're, we're doing the right things, that it makes a difference. Morello says every hour over the store's loudspeaker, a reminder goes out to staff. Where every single hour we remind the staff, no matter what they're doing, stop what you're doing, sanitize your hands. And then what we've added to that protocol is, so every other hour, we remind the staff to stop what you're doing and clean your work areas, your, your prep areas, your cash registers, your pin pads, etc. So all through the day now, we do that every single hour. So there's no excuse. There's no forgetting. 
I feel exceptionally safe um, during my shifts at Morello's. Um, and and I, I think part of the reason for that is even before the pandemic really took hold, um, Morello's was was crazy and still is on cleaning, sanitizing. Those things were all in place long before this. Rellinger has a gentle reminder for the grocery shoppers out there. Be patient, I, I think is number one. Uh, any measures that are in place that are, are a bit of an inconvenience for you are, are for your safety uh, and, uh, and also for the employee's safety as well and, and, and of those of other customers around you. So just be patient. As COVID-19 local impact continues on your TV, we'll get an update from Northumberland County and Kawartha Lakes. Welcome back to COVID-19 Local Impact on your TV. I'm Dan Malta. The Coburg Farmers Market was to officially kick off their season this weekend. Coburg Mayor John Henderson tells York Bell Smith the Farmers Market Board requested a one-week delay to make sure all safety protocols are in place. I want to give credit to the Coburg Farmers Market Board, uh, in particular Councillor Barrow, who's our liaison coordinator and Brent Larmer, our town clerk, because between the three of them, uh, our town clerk did an amazing report last night for council, which basically indicated if the farmer's market moves towards a pickup, a form of e-commerce model that was fully supported and approved uh, by our health unit, then that would be certainly the way to go for the start of this season. Um, the new location would be very near where they are, but to the south parking lot on Albert Street. And of course, it would be very much like many of the uh, situation now where you might go in your car, you make your uh, order, you go in, you get a number, you get a code, um, you drive in the circuit, they load your car and off you go. So it's very much of a similar to what's done in other parts of our town, uh, whether it be the supermarket. I, I know this was done when my wife went to uh, Staples. It also was done, I believe, when she went to Canadian Tire. So very much of that framework. Um, we were prepared last night, in fact, uh, to push it through in a very special council meeting that we're going to hold as well but the farmer's marker indicated to us that they needed more time to make this happen and as a result uh, this will come back for final discussion in a council on uh, may 19th uh, with the hope that if council supports this which i believe they will because every member of council wants the farmer's market to be successful and then it would open on the 23rd of may through to uh, December 21st, 2020. Again, it would be a different format. Uh, my understanding uh, in the submission, at least in the report, uh, 23 vendors were uh, received by the health unit under what we call the food essential workplace order, which means it's, it's all related to food because that's one of the orders from the premier. And so I'm very anxious, as I'm sure is the farmer's market. I know they're going to have to adapt to a new model. I know it's going to cost them some money, but I'm, I'm hoping and uh, that before we know it, they'll be up and operating. And I'm hoping Coburg citizens will continue to support it as they have in the past. On March 17th, all operations for Habitat for Humanity Northumberland had a hand in were closed until further notice, including all their current build sites, administration offices, and their popular ReStore. Executive Director Megan McDonald tells Mark Rockburn the ReStore is open and shoppers can start browsing items on their newly launched online store. We're trying to figure out how we could keep coming back and um, and with some of the government programs that have been in place, we realized we could, and this was something a lot of other restores were starting to launch was this concept of an online store. So um, our team came back at the end of April and they worked hard and we actually built our own platform um, or within Shopify and uh, and launched and then we've been populating it and taking pictures and so it officially launched on Monday. 
Um, and it's, it's really important to us that it's a way for customers to shop safely um, from the comfort of their home and pick up curbside at the ReStore. Um, uh, people have already been asking with um, the province announcing that hardware stores can reopen. Um, are we going to be reopening our doors? We're working on plans for that, but I will tell you that the online platform is something that we're excited about and is going to continue even if and when we do reopen our, our doors. So um, those people that really want to shop online, there's that option and, and to keep themselves safe. We all know how big of a store the ReStore is, so how much is online that people can shop and browse for? Well, so we started with, with um, there's at least something in every department, so you're right. The challenge that we will always have is that um, the stock is continuously changing, and so I, it's a challenge or an opportunity. What it means is you, you check the store all the time online because they're adding stuff every day. Um, so there's, there's a fair amount to look at right now. I myself have already bought grass seed um, and was able to pick it up curbside. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I, I think uh, it's, it's sort of like the store in that you got to check frequently. So walk us through the process. Do you need to have a sign up for an account or can you just go online and uh, purchase something or walk us through that, the, the back end of what people have to go through to be able to uh, purchase something? Yeah, you actually don't have to sign up for an account. You can. Um, so that it remembers you, but you just go to shop.habitatnorthumberland.ca and you take a look at all the products. And if there's something you want to purchase, you just enter in your information. You do need to pay by either PayPal um, or credit card um, because right now everything is contactless. One thing that uh, we hope that we're uh, unlike a normal Habitat restore purchase, we are agreeing that um, things can be refunded if at the curbside people decide it's not what they thought it was not once they've left, um, but, uh, but we are providing that, that kind of security so people can purchase something and then if it really isn't what they thought, there's that refund option. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and then you just check out and then um, Habitat will contact you when your product's ready to set up a time to pick it up. And so walk us through now as well, when the customer comes to pick up their product, whatever they buy, if it's a, you know, if it's a wrench or if it's a, if it's a couch, walk us through that because many different stores are using many different ideas as to uh, what happens once you get there and pick up. That's a really good point because unlike um, our staff love to be able to help people, um, but we can't right now. So, so that's, a, that's a really good point. So when someone gets there, um, they call and they let them know that they're there. Um, we have a people can know to do that, and then um, the staff will bring it out. We do need people to be able to load it into the car with themselves. So if it's something big, if if you bought a couch and you, you bring a truck, bring a friend or maybe not a friend at this time, maybe a family member who lives someone that can help you lift it in. Because for right now, our staff just aren't able to um, load things, um, and uh, you drive away with your product. Like many organizations continuing to operate during COVID-19, Big Brothers and Big Sisters Kawartha Lakes Halliburton has had to adapt to a new way of operating. It's definitely a, a big change for our organization to have to adapt to COVID like everybody else. Um, our team has done an amazing job, especially connecting with bigs and littles. Um, as a big, I don't find um, anything different that way. I still have the support that I, I need if I need it. Currently, we still are running our traditional mentoring, um, which happens in the, it would normally happen in the community. Um, it's modified a bit right now. I'm, I'm encouraging all of our, our matches to meet virtually. So if they can um, have video calls, um, they can write letters to each other. Uh, they could do art projects and have porch drop-offs, um, talking on the phone. Any, any means that they're able to, to do is awesome, um, with the biggest goal of just still staying connected and checking in with one another. Um, we have our in-school mentoring program. It's, it's a little bit on hold at the moment. We are working to try to get it switched to being virtual. Uh, we're also looking at launching a new program um, called Learning Support Mentoring. Uh, and it's to kind of help um, youth who are learning at home uh, with any challenges they might be having. A big, a big thing is parents have more than one youth at home and so they have to kind of help more than one child learn, which can be a lot, especially if they're trying to work from home. So uh, a way that we've kind of tried to target this is, is having um, a mentor sit with them virtually and help them 
whether it's just sitting with them, having, having, you know, watching them do their work, answering any questions that might pop up, um, or if they have the knowledge to be able to help them work through those educational um, problems they might be facing. Uh, and then we would normally have some summer programming happening, uh, so we would be kind of amping up for that right now, but we've put all of that on hold. Uh, our primary focus is to keep everybody safe and healthy. So right now, those are our big focuses, is just um, helping keeping our traditional matches running and then launching our new program to help learning at home. So I'm at a traditional uh, match. I have a little sister. Um, uh, we have a great relationship, and so it's been really hard not to be with her. Um, but we uh, have FaceTime at least once a week. We message um, on the other days. And it's um, actually kind of really neat because we have our relationship. Um, outside of her family and now I can see things that she has at home she can show me um, you know like oh I have this toy and I have this game and she showed me a puzzle that she had done so that was really nice and over FaceTime we um, I've done had a puzzle set out here and just had her tell me where the pieces go and then she's super excited that we got the puzzle done so we're trying to still do activities um, over FaceTime, but it's really nice to see that other part of her, like to, to understand her completely that, like that. I am still getting um, people signing up to be volunteers and youth signing up on our wait list as well. Um, it's been an adjustment period for us to learn how to navigate this new normal. Uh, so it's taking us a little bit longer to kind of address that, but we are still working towards that for sure. Quartherlakes.bigbrothersbigsisters.ca uh, and they can um, fill out uh, inquiry on our website there. And then from, from there, I would get in touch with them and uh, either email or call them, whatever works best. And then we'd go from there. That's the show for today. For your TV, I'm Dan Malta, and we'll see you tomorrow.